The 49ers offense has not missed a beat since Brock Purdy took the reins in week 13. Over the last three games, San Francisco is 6th in points per game at 29.7, they are 10th in third down conversion rate at 44%, and 7th in yards per play at 5.7. Brock Purdy in particular also has the 7th highest passer rating in the league over that stretch at a whopping 98.8, so it's safe to say that the rookie, former Mr. Irrelevant, has hit the ground running. But how exactly has he been so successful? Beyond just being a normal quarterback in Kyle Shanahan's system that makes good decisions and gets the ball out quickly, what is the secret sauce here that has elevated this team to new heights, so to speak? Well, based on all of our film study this week, it comes down to two main pillars that define Brock Purdy's game. Number one, his poise under pressure, and number two, his aggressiveness to attack down the field when he's given an opportunity. Let's start with number one, poise. I want to demonstrate just how cool under pressure Purdy is by using this snap from some of his first game action against Miami. After Ray Ray McLeod's motion, it's very clear here that the Dolphins are in a blitz zero look, meaning cover zero on the back end with an all out blitz up front that brings seven rushers against six pass protectors. Mathematically speaking, there's no way for the 49ers to block this up and take a shot past the sticks, but to compound the difficulty even further, the way that the Dolphins run Blitz Zero also tends to take away the screen game and the quick passing game too. How they run it, which is the same way that the Patriots have always run it as well, because of course it is, is that when it comes to coverage rules on a bunch like this one, they will lock one corner in man coverage on whoever their game plan calls for, which in this case is Debo Samuel, and then for the other two receivers in the bunch, they'll do what's called banjoing. A banjo call is when two DBs on the two other receivers will pass off coverage based on the release direction of those receivers. One will take inside and the other will take outside. In this case, Ray Ray McLeod is releasing outside while Brandon Ayuk is releasing inside, and they get picked up accordingly by Xavier Howard and Cater Kohu. Meanwhile, on the backside, George Kittle is covered in man as well, while Javon Holland is rushing off the edge, but he also has what coaches refer to as a peel alert to take Christian McCaffrey in man coverage if he releases fast to the flat. So theoretically, if McCaffrey stays in to make it a six-man protection, they will rush with seven, including Holland, and if it's a five-man protection and McCaffrey is releasing, they'll rush with six. So no matter what, they're gonna be plus one in the rush. That's how Blitz Zero works. Now, what's unique about Miami's way of running it up front with the actual Blitz is that all four of the interior pass rushers are reading the offensive line and the direction that the center slides to, because their main objective is to get the center to slide to them and to commit resources to basically blocking nobody. So for example, if the center slides left, like he does here, then these two interior rushers will read that and drop out into a low zone coverage over the middle so that they can then provide help against shallow crosses, leaving this guard to block nobody and have to go look for work elsewhere. So in summary, the idea is to get the line to slide and guarantee yourself a free rusher off the edge in the other direction which in this case is Javon Holland. Schematically speaking, Brock Purdy should be dead to rights here, and a lot of lesser quarterbacks would probably take a sack, or worse. But Purdy is built a little bit different. Watch closely here and how well he processes and handles this pressure in real time, because right after the snap, once he sees these two rushers drop out in the direction of the protection slide, he knows there's something coming the other way. But more importantly, he knows it's coming unblocked. Almost unconsciously and without even looking in Holland's direction, Purdy steps back and makes him miss, he gets out into space, and he delivers a sidearm strike to Ayuk while on the run. I think this is probably fairly obvious to many of you watching at this point, but quarterbacks that are the very last pick of the draft should not be doing this. Heck, you could argue that even many other starting quarterbacks in the league are not making this type of play, but here we are with Brock Purdy doing it in his first meaningful snaps as a pro. I cannot possibly emphasize how impressive that is. Now, our second pillar to Purdy's game that I wanna look at today is his aggressiveness down the field as a passer, which is kind of a new element that's been added into this 49ers offense recently. Just in the second quarter of the Buccaneers game alone, which was his first ever start, mind you, he had two touchdown passes in that quarter that were 20 plus yards down the field and outside the numbers. Those are really hard throws to make, generally. And Purdy made the same number of them in one quarter as their previous starter had in the last three seasons combined. It doesn't happen often in this system, just the way it's designed, but when Purdy gets a chance to stretch the field, he's going to try to stretch the field, and I love that about him. 
Let's look at one of those aforementioned touchdowns against the Buccaneers because I think it actually took Tampa by surprise how aggressive Purdy was here. The Bucs are showing quarters coverage before the snap, but it's actually going to be a strong side rotation into cover three post snap. And the thing to pay attention to is the technique of the field side corner, which is Jamel Dean. Normally in cover three, he would be zone turning and getting depth to his deep third zone, but he's almost playing it like man coverage with his hips still square to the line of scrimmage because he doesn't believe that the 49ers are going to go deep on him. He has no fear that Brock Purdy is going to throw a go ball from the far hash, by the way. So it's an even more difficult throw than if it was on the near hash. And because of that lack of fear of the deep ball, he's overplaying the possibility of anything underneath like a seven route or a curl. And that's great for the 49ers, of course, because they're dialing up a stutter go with Brandon Ayuk specifically to punish Dean for being overly aggressive. Right when Ayuk begins to break down, Dean is already T-stepping and driving on what he thinks is a curl route, and Purdy sells it even further by giving him a little pump fake just to make sure he takes the cheese. Dean absolutely thinks he's going to get a pick here, but by the time he realizes it was a double move, the ball was already out, and Ayuk was able to easily walk in for the touchdown. Also, one more note here, because I'm sure some people are going to talk about this pass being slightly underthrown. Go back and watch the hit that Purdy took as he released this thing. He has a 310-pound defensive tackle barreling down on him after his pump fake. He knows he's going to get crushed no matter what, and he can see it coming, but he still doesn't hesitate, he doesn't drop his eyes into the pressure, and he still half steps into the throw to willingly accept this physics lesson from Deirdre and Sanat. Personally, I don't care that this ball was slightly underthrown because how could it not be? The guy was staring straight into the gates of hell as he let it go, so I'm kinda willing to give him a pass here. If there was ever a quarterback that played the game like he has absolutely nothing to lose, it would be Brock Purdy. It doesn't matter if the pocket gets tight or if a defensive lineman is about to fold him like laundry as he's releasing the ball, Purdy will stand in there and deliver no matter what. Does he have the best arm in the world? No. Is he big or fast in the open field? Also no. But can he win a Super Bowl with poise and toughness and occasionally aggression? You bet he can. I don't know what the floor is for this 49er squad, but I do know their ceiling. And that ceiling still involves a trophy, a ring, and one hell of a parade.